It is my pleasure to introduce Overland Park Mayor Carl Gerlach to present his 2019 State of the City Address. Carl Gerlach was elected mayor in April of 2005 after representing Ward 3 on the City Council since 1995. He was re-elected mayor in 2009, 2013, and 2017. Mayor Gerlach is active on boards throughout the community and the state. He has received the NAACP Martin Luther King Jr. Legacy Award and the Ewing Kaufman Distinguished Eagle Scout Award. The Crescent Peace Society presented its 2013 Peace Award to him in recognition of his commitment and efforts to promote killer pluralism, understanding, tolerance, and acceptance of religious and cultural diversity in greater Kansas City. We know him as a leader who respects diversity, is leading efforts on the community visioning, and has been a supporter of business and development throughout his career and public life. Please help me in welcoming Mayor Carl Gerlach. why you want to be a greeter at the Arboretum. I know you're always looking for more volunteers at the Arboretum, and now that I've retired, I thought I'd do a little bit more volunteering. Okay, we can always use volunteers. Let's hear your greeting. W welcome to the Arboretum. That's good. Um, it's pronounced Arboretum. And can you emphasize the welcome? Welcome to the Arboretum. Arbor Arboretum. You know, Mr. Ger Gerlach, um, we expect a lot from our volunteers. Do you feel like you're volunteer material? It's just, it's just, it's just, it, it, it's just about to start. I'm sorry, but I have to leave. Wait, what just happened? Where did he go? Uh-huh, uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hey, uh, let me call you back. Mayor. Matt, how are you? Good, just dreaming about how this remodel's gonna look. What brings you to the Edison District? Matt. I need your help with something. Of course, Mayor. What can I do for you? I want you to take this and answer it when it rings. I'll do the rest. I apologize, but I have to go. Remember, answer it when it rings. I gotta learn to aim this thing better. Carl, what's this? Bill, I need a favor. Answer that phone when it rings. Mayor, is everything all right? Bill, everything's fine. I'm just short on time. Will you do this for me? Sure, Carl, I'll answer, but can you tell me what this is about? Bill, let's just say it has to do with commerce. And remember, answer it when it rings. Are you kidding me? Yes, thank you very much. Is Mr. Valentine here? Absolutely, you can go right in. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, what a surprise. What can I do for you? Hello, Mike, I don't have much time, but I need a favor. I need you to answer that phone when it rings. Okay, this is a little weird. You come in here, you're a little bit hurried, and, and you give me this phone, it looks like a burner phone. What's going on, Mayor? Mike, I don't have time to explain. I just need to know that you'll answer it when it rings. Sure, Mayor, I'll answer it. <laughs> 
Thanks, Mike. I'll be in touch. Mayor, that watch of yours is going to give me a heart attack. Sorry to cause you heartburn. Wish me luck. Good luck. You're on right now. Hello there. That was exhilarating, let me tell you. Um, first of all, I want to say thank Mike for everything that he did in the introduction. Uh, as you all know, a couple years ago, we've used different technologies. We've used uh, Virtual Carl last year to assist me in my presentation. And then last year, we used Cassandra, the artificial intelligence interactive voice in this presentation. So cross your fingers, hope that uh, it's working so far. We'll see if it still works, except for a few monitors up here. Everything's working fine. It's a great honor with humility and honor that I uh, <clears throat> have this opportunity to speak to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. A collection of leaders who do so much for this community. Overland Park is a community, is, if its success was judged by the presence of businesses and their investment, it would make the city of Overland Park beyond fortunate. We have such great opportunity here. Nothing speaks better of Overland Park than what you and your businesses do through your association and your commitment to the Overland Park Chamber of Commerce. Let me take a moment to express my gratitude to the Chamber's Board of Directors for this annual opportunity to be here with you. The Chamber's President, Tracy Osborne Olchen, I want to say thank you very much in her to her and to her entire staff. It's a remarkable event. Thank you, Tracy. I'd also... <clears throat> I'd also like to extend a personal thank you to St. Luke's Health System for t being today's sponsor. I appreciate your commitment to Overland Park and to the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you very much, St. Luke's. Brad Mitchell, General Manager of the Convention Center, and Jessica Corona, Director of Food and Beverage, and the new executive chef, Tim Freeman, and all their entire staff. I really want to thank you for the entire team for all that you've done today. Did you enjoy your lunch today? <clears throat> Over decades, outstanding community-minded Overland Park leaders with great vision and energy have spent hours, countless hours, in meetings and working together to share ideas and to encourage dialogue with their constituents. Today's council members are no different. They are pursuing the best, the best for Overland Park, and I'd like to recognize my colleagues on the city council. Please hold your applause until the end, and council members, if you could stand when I mention your name. <clears throat> Excuse me, first in Ward 1, Council President Terry Happershire and Logan Healy. Ward 2, Council Members Kurt Skoog and Paul Lyons. Ward 3, Council Members Dave White and Jim Kite. Ward 4, Council Members Fred Spears and Gina Burke. Ward 5, Council Members John Thompson and Ferris Ferrisati. And Ward 6, Council Members Rick Collins and Chris Newland. Please help me thank them for all that they do. My wife, Jill, is also here today, and there's not enough words to describe how her support and her exceptional have been exceptionally beneficial to me. As you know, my family is very close to me, as yours is to you, I'm sure. And I want to thank my wife, Jill, my son, Chris, my daughter, Jennifer, and other daughter, Katie, along with my son-in-law, Ryan, for the outstanding support, and, and uh, daughter-in-law, Lindsay, for the outstanding support for, that each of them have done and endured with me doing in this position. I'm enormously and forever for great, grateful to them. Also, Bill Ebel and his outstanding staff, he leads an inspiring and thoughtful department directors. They are incredibly talented. They work together as a team. They work every day to provide their great services to the city of Overland Park. And that city is made up of over 200,000 people nowadays. So, Bill, thank you very much. If they could all stand. <clears throat> I 
And one other thank you in the year from the snow year of 2019, please help me thank all the snow crews. That is department. <clears throat> They've been working very hard. They come from eight different departments that all come together under Public Works and work uh, snow, and I think they're going to be out again tonight for a long night, so thank them very much. You know, Overland Park has been blessed with wonderful, talented, bright, inquisitive, and thoughtful business leaders over the decades. Not surprisingly, today's business model is different than yesterday's. And tomorrow's will be different in the years ahead. Witness the changes in Overland Park. Redevelopment of existing property is bringing excitement, vitality, and more economic opportunities to the city. Do you know that the value of construction in Overland Park last year approached $800 million, which was a record? And in the last six years, over $3 billion have been invested in the city of Overland Park. The hammers are swinging in Overland Park and the sign that companies and developers are uninhibited in pursuing their goals. Innovation and creativity should not be constrained. Apprehension, fear of change, or the unknown should, nothing, should not inhibit us. I mean, look at me. I was fearful of giving up my wide ties, my silk shirts, my leisure suits, my white dress shoes, and my, of course, my Justin Bieber hairdo. But thanks to my wife, Jill, she definitely saw what I could not see and helped me through that stage of life. But today isn't about my fashion. Your companies and our community want, no, let me change that, we require progress and achievement. Humorist and entertainer Will Rogers once said, even if you're on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there. I'm here today to say Overland Park is greater than its past, and its future will be greater than today. Momentum knows no slow lane. Let it be known, accepting the status quo does not equate to success. College Boulevard is an example of moving ahead. Its concept and initial development in the late 1960s and early 1970s kept us on the right track, bringing companies, jobs, and wealth to Overland Park. This iconic stretch has been a pathway to making Overland Park a center of commerce. We believe there is still appeal to College Boulevard, but it's time for even more. I bet you didn't know, approximately 30,000 jobs are within one mile of College and Metcalf Corridor. That makes the downtown Kansas City, Missouri, and the College Corridor the two most significant job centers in the entire metropolitan area. But that measure of success does not satisfy us. The quarter needs after work. It needs weekend attractions. It needs to be more walkable and better presence to what Overland Park becomes great. I believe that this community is ready to initiate change now stay with me here for a second. I want to present a couple what-ifs to you. You're at the convention center, right? And you most likely walked in from the north parking lot. Sometimes we call that the unused sea of asphalt. Can you envision different uses? What if we reworked the parking lot to accommodate an entertainment venue or activities that the entire community could attend and enjoy? Oh, don't worry, your ease of parking at the convention center will remain top of mind as we seek and discuss and contemplate many different ideas. We are looking at how private and public partnerships may foster greater investment opportunities and enhance the corridor's live, 
work and play objective. Now in April, the City Council will receive an implementation plan, but actions are already starting to contemplate improvements. The first to be is the follow-up study to look at specifically what Overland Park might do with that land immediately north of this building. But there's more, more activity to come. <clears throat> Excuse me. As we create the conditions that make businesses successful, I thought it would be good to hear from some of the business leaders about why they chose Overland Park to build their businesses. I tricked, I mean, excuse me, I mean I invited three business leaders to assist me with today's event. Just like they, you, you and them and they are helping shape Overland Park of the future. Each represents a significant infusion of jobs to Overland Park. We can all agree that quality jobs are the lifeblood coursing through the veins of this vibrant city, providing for families, driving our economic engine, and helping honest, hardworking people contribute back to our community. Help me welcome Mike Valentine, CEO of NetSmart Technology. Let's see if this thing will work. Let's see if we can work this beaming up thing. Mike. Welcome. Thanks for beaming in and joining me. Hello, Mayor. Thank you, Mike. You look good. Thank you. You lost the toilet paper off of your shoe. Uh, I got all the toilet paper off there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Can you spend a little bit of time telling them all that's what's new at NetSmart and what things that got exciting going on? Sure, sure. So thank you for having us. Um, I'll tell you a uh, little bit of the history. So NetSmart's a 51-year-old business. We grew up on the other side of healthcare, is what I, I tell people. So we provide solutions for the community-based providers. So many of you are probably familiar with Cerner. Cerner focuses on health systems physician practices. We focus on the providers that are in the community connecting back over. Behavioral health, child and family services, addiction treatment, home care, hospice, senior living, et cetera. So that's uh, been our focus for 51 years. About eight years ago, we moved to Overland Park. So we had a temp space at the corner of Metcalf and College. And uh, since then, we've moved into, we now occupy five buildings with the la latest one, uh, the Teva building uh, at uh, College and Null. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're looking forward to filling that one up as well. Um, so the, the associate population uh, over the course of that time, we've been fortunate enough to grow. So in the last eight years, uh, we've grown from about six times uh, the size we were eight years ago. Uh, we went from zero associates here in Kansas City to uh, a little over 700 associates here in Kansas City and about 1,800 uh, across the country. So we're, we're proud to, to call Overland Park home now. It's our, our world headquarters uh, uh, for now. And um, we, um, a couple of notable facts about the company. We uh, um, do an internship program for those of you that have kids that need uh, employment. Every summer we bring in about 40 or 50 uh, uh, kids off of campuses and dip them in what we do and, and uh, train them as we move forward. And um, we also do something that I think is a really important part of uh, being a good technology provider to healthcare. We spend a lot of time volunteering time back into the community. So we created something called the Everyday Matters uh, Organization. It's a, a not-for-profit organization. And um, uh, we allow our associates to spend a couple of days each year uh, spending time in the community with our clients. And uh, last year we had thousands of hours dedicated back into our, our clients' environments. Um, and in Overland Park, we had over 2,600 hours uh, dedicated back into different volunteering opportunities. So we're very proud of that. It makes a big difference. Another thing that makes a big difference is we, um, we've taken the time to actually do mental health certifications of our associates. And I had the privilege of having lunch with one of the uh, individuals that we've certified as a trainer, but uh, we've committed ourselves to getting certifications across the uh, population of our associates, 90% of our associates with a certification, and we're about halfway there. We have about 50% of our associates that are certified 
uh, in uh, mental health and mental health awareness, um, which I would recommend for all of you, and you can uh, come see me if you'd like to learn more about that. Uh, so, uh, Oakland Park's been great to us. It's been a great community to grow up in. Uh, we look forward to, to the opportunity to grow forward. A lot of the communities and the signature communities that you talked about are things that we're very interested in as well. We've, uh, we've, we have the old school version of a campus. We've opportunistically grown uh, in the area, but we're, we're excited to call Oakland Park home, and uh, we appreciate everything you've done to support our growth here. Mike, thank you very much. Mike's creating an excitement on College Boulevard and bringing high paying jobs, but I think there's one thing we need to do. We need to change that from the Teva building to the NetSmart building. There, perfect. Thank you much. Mike, thank you. Mike, thank you for your belief and support of Overland Park. It looks like years ahead of success for your company, and thank you very much. We want new residents and Overland Park businesses they want community that has energy and pizzazz. That combination may make a difference in attracting new and retaining high-performing employees. Downtown Overland Park is a destination for filling those needs today. If you have not driven through downtown Overland Park in a while, do so. There are five different multi-story structures under construction. Most of them are set to open this spring or this summer. Newest to the collection of the projects in, is the Edison District in downtown Overland Park. Let me introduce Matt Druden, co-founder of the Edison Spaces in downtown Overland Park's Edison District. Let me see if my watch works again here. Hi, Matt. It's really good to have you here today. There, we made it. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Matt. Glad to be here. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming today. Why don't you give us a little information about what's going on downtown? Sure. Appreciate the phone call. A little heads up would have been nice. <laughs> Sorry but glad, about that. Glad to be here. Um, so, uh, well, we're glad we can be here to talk a little about the Edison District. Um, it's an honor to be here today. Um, so, what is the Edison District? Well, Tim Barton, my business partner and I, we've been looking for an opportunity to bring kind of this vision we had to reality. We've been looking throughout the metropolitan Kansas City area, eventually determined what we found in this vibrant and appealing location in downtown Overland Park, a place to create a really cool uh, community space, which there's some renderings up there. We personally have been big fans of downtown Overland Park and have had our offices down there for, for six years. Uh, just last week, we began putting still beams up on our project uh, we, are, we expect um, the, the still beings are being put in, in place. We expect to attract about 400 office workers, both from established companies and entrepreneurs, some of who we expect to move in some of the current apartment buildings being built all around the, the area. The mayor talked about some of the, several, the large developments that are currently going on. Most of them are a lot of multifamily. Mm -hmm. uh, on the first floor of our building, we're going to have a food hall. If you haven't been to a food hall, they're popping up all around the country. Our food hall will have seven independent chefs that will have their own space, but a common area where people can eat inside or outside the, the courtyard that's being built. But the, the food halls around the community are really kind of becoming a centerpiece for, for gatherings, especially for all those foodies who are always kind of looking for um, a new adventure. Uh, there will be a, the large public courtyard, which I was kind of pointing out, uh, it's to be a great place to enjoy your food, spend time with your family or friends, and host events. Our goal is to make this a very family-friendly event space. Um, the historic Overland Park Presbyterian Church, which is where you and I met, Mayor, yes. uh, was built in 1929. Uh, it offers over 16,000 square feet of office or event space. We are currently in the process of trying to find a tenant for that building. Once we have the tenant, we are going to totally redo the building, the mechanicals, the interior, but we will maintain and preserve kind of the historical character of that church. Uh, a lot of talk about parking in downtown Overland Park. Mm -hmm. We are trying to help with that problem. So in our development, we are building a 400-spot uh, parking garage. Plenty of those spaces will be, be available all day, every day, but all of the parking garage is going to be available in the evenings and after hours so, to accommodate anyone that's visiting the area. Uh, finally, what attracted us to downtown Overland Park uh, is, this, is this emerging presence that it has in the metro area. Uh, it's a unique opportunity, an area with historical character, 
new development, and potential to have enough density to create a true walking community, which I think is kind of a missing piece of Overland Park currently. So um, we believe that you know, a lot of people visit downtown Overland Park, especially for the farmer's market. We believe in that what we're building with the Edison District is going to add value to the entire area and for anybody who, who visits the downtown. Mike, thank you. Matt, thank you very much. <laughs> no problem. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've got some wonderful things going downtown, and I can't wait to make it down to downtown Overland Park. Oh, we're excited. We're excited. Thank you. Thank you. Much. And if it's okay with you, I'm just going to walk back and set a beam out. <laughs> All right. So, thank right. you. Thank you, Mayor. We appreciate your time, Matt. Yep. Your company's investment and contribution to Overland Park is helping the community keep its focal point on downtown for many, from millennials to retirees. Now I encourage you to visit downtown Overland Park. It's a wonderful place, and we're blessed to have many successful businesses down there right now. Now I want to take a chance here to recognize an Overland Park businessman. He's retired and has done so for much of his city is back to Overland Park. Frank Thompson owned Overland Park Jeep Eagle and Med at 87th and Medcalf for many, many years. Frank's love and commitment to Overland Park has been steadfast and remains steadfast to this day. And that love and commitment that started 52 years ago was carried out through his faithful dedication as an Overland Park business owner. I'll let Frank and his wife, Evangeline, they came through, came to the city and wanted to donate $1 million towards the redesign and the construction of a park in downtown Overland Park. This spring, we will launch a $3.7 million project to update the 41-year-old Santa Fe Commons Park just across the street from the Edison Project. Some of the details about that project include two open-air shelters, a raised water feature in the center plaza, a performance stage, a children's play area with slides, climbers, spinners, and swings, and an off outside office space with Wi-Fi for people to use. Many of these features were items that residents requested when we had several public meetings. The Thompsons have generously donated to heart and lung research in our community, to patient care at St. Luke's Hospital. They funded two endowed chairs at the hospital. They've made contributions to some of society's most vulnerable, including the fight against cancer, the Alzheimer's research at KU, lunches to help feed young children at school, and the Tiny House Project for Homeless Military Veterans. So we've gone ahead and renamed the park Thompson Park in honor of what Frank and his wife have done, not only for Overland Park, but for the entire countless other people that live in this community. I'd like to recognize Frank Thompson. He's my guest today. Frank, could you please stand? He's right back here in the middle. <clears throat> Just as Frank is committed to Overland Park, another impactful business leader is making a statement with his dedication to our city. From his life-shaping experience as a youth on the family farm out by Abilene, Kansas, to Overland Park, Bill Ryan is growing his company, Shamrock Trading Corporation, at a highly visible location. Let me invite Frank and Bill to join us today. I hate it when the beam me up thing doesn't work. Looks like we're gonna have to go old school. Let's FaceTime. Hi there, Mayor Gerlach. I'm so glad to be able to join you over FaceTime. That transporter thing you were trying was making me a little dizzy. Sorry about that, Bill. Hey, you know, I've got you on the big screen here at the city state of the uh, city address. Can you take a second to tell me a little bit more about Shamrock Trading? 
and the exciting things that are coming up in the future. Sure, Mayor. I'm happy to. I'm currently on site at our new property on the northeast corner of 95th and Metcalf, where we have started demolition. As most of you know, this real estate has much historical significance for the people of Overman Park in Johnson County. It was developed as the French market in the early 60s and became a thriving Kmart retail center a decade later. However, as the retail patterns began to decline over the next four decades, Kmart closed its doors in 2014. The property has been sitting empty for the last four and a half years. For those of you who don't know Shamrock, we're a 33-year-old family and employee-owned business. Our principal business offerings include transportation, logistics, finance, and technology. We currently do business in 44 different countries. Shamrock also has offices in Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, Midland, Texas, and Laredo, Texas. We purchased the two towers with the beautiful lake across the street behind us in 2012. After three years of renovation, we started moving our people into the towers in 2015. We believe the Shamrock Towers across the street will complement our plans to develop up to three additional towers at this location. And the really exciting news is we hope to add at least a thousand new jobs in the coming years. Our goal is to maintain the majority of our workforce in Kansas City because of the reasonable cost of living and the terrific work ethic and values of our young people. It is critical for our recruiting to be located in a community where millennials want to work and raise their families. The Kansas City Business Journal has awarded Shamrock one of the best large companies to work for in Kansas City for the last four consecutive years. We believe deeply in the four building blocks of an organization, great people, great culture, a great work ethic, and great real estate. I would like to thank the City Council of Overland Park, Mayor Carl Gerlach, City Manager Bill Evil, the concept of Vision Metcalf, Governor Jeff Collier, and so many others for pulling together to make this large project possible. Mayor, it was great talking to you, but I apologize. I have to get back to work. Oh, and please, don't try to do the beam up thing again. I feel like I need some Tums. Over and out. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. I need to talk to Scotty. I'll talk to Scotty in the transporter room to make sure that beam me up thing works in the future. Thank goodness we could use that old technology, Facebook Live. You know, four corners at 95th and Medcalf are hot in the real estate market. That intersection has been a prime location for retail, but now exciting changes on the way. Next to Lowe's and where the vacant Sears building stands, there are two separate proposals for mixed-use projects. Both are in the early planning stages, so stay tuned for more discussions of what's going on there. Let's cross the street to the west. Last fall, we learned that all these office buildings on the southwest corner are for sale. Then, of course, you have the Shamrock operations on the northwest and the northeast corners. Key community leaders and I are meeting with state officials this afternoon yet to talk about allocating funds to improve US 69 from four lanes to six lanes, south from I-435 to 167th Street. I agree with you, we can wait no longer Expansion of US 69 is vital to prepare and to work out with, we need to work together with our Chamber of Commerce, with our state, the regional, and the federal partners to get this accomplished. Travel time for motorists will triple in the coming years if nothing is done today. Safety will become a greater concern. Already, US 69 carries more traffic than any other four-lane highway in the entire state of Kansas, including I-70. To do nothing on US-69 will increase cost for businesses, 
It'll Overland Park in Johnson County and the entire metropolitan area. But like the business leaders you heard from earlier, we're looking ahead at what the future can be. We look at Overland Park today and the Overland Park of the future. To quote one of the Ford OP steering committee members, Overland Park has never been satisfied with just good enough. If we want our children, our grandchildren, to come back to Overland Park, if we want businesses to locate here so we have jobs, if we want to continue this marvelous experience that our founders started nearly 60 years ago, we need to be better, more creative, and we need a bold vision like they had back in 1960 when Overland Park became an incorporated city. This was an involved community visioning process that provided sweeping engagement of our community. The planning phase of Overland Park was brought to a close and the city council joined 65 other communities and organizations with their endorsement of this plan. The mission is to imagine tomorrow and to inspire action. We have imagined. Now it's time for us to act. Ford OP is a blueprint for the action. We can use this engagement to help us move the community forward. Some of the initiatives include a gathering space for programs and events, living options to include diversity in variety and affordability in housing choices, health so that we can assure mental and physical wellness, greater connection and choices for transportation and infrastructure, cultivating a welcoming, open and engaging community and spurring innovation that's unique. We have a great city today, but the question is, how is the world changing? and how will we lead? To be perfectly honest and candid with you, this work cannot be done alone and shouldn't. Each of you has a personal stake to move this nationally recognized community forward. Yes, I said forward, a word I use with intent to describe the direction we intend to go. It can be done and it must be done as one Overland Park Council member said, keep your foot on the gas. The second you start hitting the brake, we not only stop, but we start moving backwards. We are moving along the right track. Please join us. Our future will be greater than today due to your ideas, due to your input, and due to your involvement. Thank you very much today. I appreciate this. pretty hard to follow. Thank you, Mayor, for your remarks. We are fortunate to live and work in a community with a team of leaders like the Mayor, our City Council, and City staff. We appreciate all that they do to go above and beyond and make Overland Park the great city it is today. Thank you for your passion, commitment, and dedication to our community. Again, a special thanks today to our presenting event sponsor, St. Luke's Health System. Your partnership is greatly appreciated. Thank you also to our corporate partners, Advent Health, Black & Beach, Central Bank of the Midwest, Empower Retirement, HCA Midwest, Menorah Medical Center and Overland Park Regional Medical Center, and Sprint. And also thank you to all our corporate sponsor, and Leadership Circle sponsors for their support of the Chamber. Thank you all for joining us today, and we are adjourned. Everything's all right. <laughs>
I don't have time to answer my just I need <laughs> pondering, we're pondering. <laughs> now I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I kind of figured that. That was it. <laughs> do we do any hand expressions or anything? Sure. Or? <laughs> What's my mind? That's what you're supposed to say. Run! Get! That's, that's the roll. Run right now. <laughs> Wish me luck. Go. <laughs> Fly, be free. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, not too long for you. <laughs>